Uh, what I'm not going to do is ride the emotional roller coaster that this season will take you on. Uh, I mean, what, a, what an amazing, traumatic turn of events from week to week, and we just saw that. And so um, the thing that I would say, Gary, is when you look at this game today, there was things that can be improved upon. The reasons that we didn't execute um, were very correctable. Um, we have to make sure that we're creating better clarity as all right, guys, uh, congratulations to Coach Eberflus and the Bears. They did enough to be able to get it done. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that come to mind that are disappointing about us not getting the result. You know, I like the way that we battled, but um, in the first half, offensively, we were able to, you know, really throughout the course of the game, move the ball, um, did a really poor job of finishing drives. You know, for us to have four drives in the first half, settle for three field goal attempts, and then obviously the one play drive that resulted in a turnover, that, that was a killer. Um, I thought our defense played excellent from the jump. Um, but for us to only have six points after, you know, the way that the guys were able to move the football, um, we have to do a better job once we get into striking distance of finishing drives with touchdowns. Um, the guys stayed in the fight. There were some good things, um, but there was some really uncharacteristic mistakes that we made as a team in regards to just some mental errors where we left people free. Um, and you can't do that if you're going to be a good offense and consistently execute. Um, certainly, we'll go back to work. Um, Everybody has a hand in this, and, uh, and we can all be better, and it always starts with me. And um, Disappointed for our group, um, but excited about testing our resolve like this season has already done in a handful of instances. What were the combination of factors that did lead to the red zone issues early on today? Well, I mean, every single drive kind of has its own individual story. Um, you know, we obviously took the negative. Uh, we took the sack on the one on the second down situation, so you're kind of overcoming a, a bad situation there. Um, you know, then we we got kind of got away with not having the turnover when Brisker was out of bounds and didn't reestablish. Um, there was certainly some sequencing and some things like that where you want to put guys in better spots. So I'll always look at myself first and foremost on that. But um, for us to be able to move the football as well as we did to get into those situations, they tightened up. Um, some of it was definitely where I've got to do a better job of it. Um, and then there's times where we can execute collectively better in terms of just our overall techniques, fundamentals, and ability to fight through the down based on what the defense presents. Quinton gets that sack and you guys get the ball back and then go three and out. Did you have any thoughts of trying to pick up those couples? There was, there was a possibility, but where we were at and for the defense to have that momentum and, you know, some of the different things, you know, didn't really think about in that situation, but it's, it's not something that would have been, you know, totally crazy to think about. I thought he did good. You know, I thought there were some really good things. Um, I thought there was a couple times where we weren't targeted accurately in some protections, and he took some unnecessary hits. Obviously, he's hit as he's attempting the one where we maybe give ourselves a chance to go, you know, try to win the thing in uh, dramatic fashion, but uh, did a lot of good things. Um, I'm, I'm interested to look at the tape to see some of the things that we can improve on um, collectively around him with just the overall fundamentals, techniques, ability to execute, and then, uh, like I'll always say, you know, certainly want to be able to try to make sure I'm putting him in spots to succeed as well, but uh, did a lot of good things today. Still processing this, but sitting at one and three going into a, a game against the Packers before the bye, but how are you feeling about I'm not you know I think you just take it a week at a time uh, what I'm not going to do is ride the emotional roller coaster that this season will take you on uh, I mean what, a, what an amazing traumatic turn of events from week to week and we just saw that and so um, the thing that I would say, Gary, is when you look at this game today, there was things that can be improved upon. The reasons that we didn't execute um, were very correctable. Um, we have to make sure that we're creating better clarity as coaches. Guys understand it, and then we're ultimately able to go execute. You know, the energy was there. Um, there was a good edge, um, but we were lacking in the consistent execution throughout. And that's what we have to be able to do, um, and that's what we'll continue to strive to do. But. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. We, we take it a day at a time, a week at a time. Today was a disappointing outcome. There was our, we had our opportunities, um, you know, to come away with the result that we're hunting up in this football game, and ultimately we didn't get it done, and the Bears did. Being, being able to lean on Kyron again, what's that about what he was able to get? Yeah, it was good. I thought he did a really good job. I thought he impacted the game in a positive way, um, and um, you know, ultimately we've got to be able to consistently do that if we expect to be, um, you know, a quality offense quarter um, things really especially seem to compound between the, the turnover and then the missed field goal and then the, the holding calls that nullified the sacks. When you go into the locker room at the half, how do you try to reverse course 
Um, and and what, were you, what was your takeaway from that quarter seeming to really swing? Well, I think you addressed exactly. I mean, you just said exactly what happened. I mean, the players know what the truth is. You know, they had penalties that allowed them to be able to sustain drives. Um, they had a penalty that allowed them to have the ball on the one yard line when it looked like we were going to do a good job in a sudden change situation. So we have to play with the right techniques and fundamentals to avoid those calls. Um, we didn't execute a, a protection that led to the sack that Sweat got. I mean, that, that's a, that should not occur on that protection. Um, that's something that just can't happen. And it did. And it led to a turnover that ended up being really the difference in, in the, you know, a, a key factor in the difference in the outcome. Um, you know, we, it looked like we ended up having to kick the laces on the missed field goal. Um, but all of those things are things that you address, you, you keep it real with them, and you say, let's try to avoid those with the solution-oriented mindset and mentality in terms of how do we avoid the penalties? How do we make sure the snap and hold where we're not giving them the laces? How do we make sure that we're executing with the appropriate techniques on that protection where we gave up the sack fumble. And um, that's what you tell them. That's all I know how to, to be able to do. What did you think about the last today? You know, I thought it was pretty good. And then I thought there was, you know, the, like anything else, you know, I thought we did a really good job throughout the course of the game. And then the key drive that we had to have, they ended up popping a long one that Swift ended up scoring from 36 yards out. Uh, it kind of looked, I, I kind of saw what had happened, but, um, you know, those count too, you know, and, and those big ones, you know, those explosives, that ends up being the difference in, in football games. And, um, and we've got to continue to try to limit those and create them on the offensive side of the ball. Okay. Thanks, guys. Stafford.